Hey there, I'm Jeremy Siskin. I am the author of this book, Playing Solo Jazz Piano. And I had one of my YouTube followers ask me um, what's maybe a simple question, maybe not such a simple question, which is how do you, what do you do with your left hand when you're playing solo jazz piano? How do you fill everything in? And I think to completely answer this question, one of the things that we have to think about is the difficulty, the main challenge in my mind of playing solo jazz piano, and the main question that we have to answer if we're going to get good at it, is we have these three musical elements, the bass, the chords in the middle range, and then the melody or the improvisation. And we need to keep all three of these going at all times, but of course, how many hands do we have? We have two hands. So there's a lot of different ways. It might seem like there would only be you know, one way to do this, but there's a lot of ways that we've come up with to kind of juggle these different elements. So one of the most obvious is stride piano, right? Stride piano basically means that we're going to alternate in the left hand between the bass and the mid-range chord. Now, I don't really recommend stride, stride piano for anybody who's less than an advanced pianist or if you're not really interested in stride piano, it's kind of its own genre and it's really difficult because you basically are doing target practice every single beat, right? To really be stride piano, it's gotta move every single chord or note. And you've gotta be very accurate, which is not easy. But one of the things that we can do in order to use that same kind of skill set is what I call kind of a stride-like comping. And this is the first way that I would suggest to divide those different uh, to divide those different elements up. And so here, essentially, we're going to keep the bass and the chords in the left hand, and the melody's gonna be in the right hand. And that gives us a lot of freedom in the right hand to improvise and to play the melody in whatever style we might want. So the difference between stride and this stride-like comping is that we're not going to be going back and forth every beat. We're going to be going back and forth much less. So, for example, it could just be one, two, three, four, 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 one, two. So I'm playing the tune I Love You by Cole Porter, by the way. This is one I'm working on with some of my students. level, you're still going to alternate between a bass note and a chord, just like you would in stride. But now I'm doing it essentially every half note. I'm doing it on the end of two and the end of four. So with the melody, this basic version sounds like this. harmonic rhythm is changing. Instead of having one chord per measure, now we're having two chords per measure. And in those measures where the harmonic rhythm speeds up, there's a lot of different things we could do. We could go... So I'm choosing mainly to just stick with those bass notes. And if you want to get a little fancy, you can kind of fill in some notes in between. Make a little bass line in there. Now there's a lot of ways that we can dress this up. So one thing that we can do is we can add small fills to the bass. two main things that I'm doing. One is I'm going 5-1, 5-1, five, 5-1, one, five, one, five, one, five, one, right? Or I'll do some kind of a half step lead in. Or, 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 from below. So that's 
that's one way we can dress it up. We can also, instead of just playing a single note for the bass, we could play bigger chords. We could have a seventh, um, maybe a fifth, even a big chord like this. I'm playing the root, the fifth, the ninth, and the third. change what I call my stride pattern. And the stride pattern, in my mind, refers to your kind of alternation of chord and bass. And so the most typical thing is just to alternate chord, bass, chord, bass. But there's a lot of other things that we could do. We could do bass, chord, chord, chord. I call the piece piece pattern after Bill Evans. Bass chord, chord, bass, bass, chord, chord, right? So it could be bass, chord, chord, bass, bass, chord, chord, bass, bass, chord, chord, bass, bass, chord, chord. Right. Um, you could alternate. You could, instead of starting with the bass, you could start with the chord. you can change the rhythm. I'm keeping a pretty consistent rhythm, but it's nice to put in some little surprises. Just like comping is unpredictable when you're playing with a band, you can make your, uh, your kind of stride style comping unpredictable as well. So that's the first thing that you can do is this stride style comping. Essentially, we're giving two jobs to the left hand so that the right hand can only have one. And this works great if you're improvising. Especially if you're improvising and you're covering a lot of those chord tones already, people will still be able to hear the harmony. Now, your second option would be to, have the, to give the right hand two jobs. Um, and I sometimes hear this referred to as the third hand approach. And so in this case, the left hand can stick more in the bass register and the right hand will take the left hand's job. And so there's at least two ways of doing this. One is that you basically do kind of a calm response. that I'm maybe starting to phrase my melody a little bit differently because I know that I want my right hand to have time to get down into that middle or lower register so that you can cover that chord. The second thing that you can do is I kind of call it draping the chords off of the melody, which means that I'm going to play the chords at the same time as the melody note. And I don't have standard voicings because it's going to really be different for every melody note. But as much as possible, I'm trying to cover third, fifth, seventh, anything like that. So
Hyman, uh, the great pianist from Boston, is famous for this approach and for making it sound like he had a third hand. And I think to be fair, uh, the pianists who do this really well sometimes also help out with the left hand. So, you know, I'd be... to do it really well, but there are ways that you can kind of get in there with the left hand even while you're playing the bass and help out the right hand. So you might do a combination. You might do some where you're alternating. And then... Now watch what I'm about to do here. left hand stride style comping. And certainly you don't have to switch, you don't have to choose between one or the other. So that's your second way. The right hand can take on two jobs instead of the left hand. A third way that you could think about doing this is using what I call shared hand voicings. Um, and if you do happen to get this book, uh, there's, well, there's two chapters explaining how to find these voicings. And then there's a lot more chapters on how to use them. Because I think they're really essential to a sophisticated jazz piano style. And basically in shared hand voicings, your hands are going to be pretty stretched out um, because you're trying to grab a low bass note plus help out with the chord. And then in the right hand, you're trying to play the melody plus help out with the chord. So in a certain way, these fingers, you know, maybe these two, sometimes the third finger, these are going to be playing the chords. And then these are going to be playing the melody in the right hand, the bass in the left hand. separating out my right hand and I'm playing you know both of my hands are stretched right I've got a ninth in the right hand I've got a tenth sorry I've got a ninth in the left hand a tenth in the right hand shared hand voicings. For now, the book is probably the best reference. And you can also, so there I separated the melody from the chords. You can also separate the bass. So I'm still playing that bass on beat one, right? shared hand voicing. So check this out. Um, there's those shared hand voicings. The right, the right hand's helping out. There's another shared hand voicing to emphasize this note. physically possible. When my right hand's really high in the register, if I'm headed this way, it makes it really difficult to reach in and help out. Whereas if I'm lower in the register, 
um, then I'm already kind of in the register that I want to play, and I can get in there with my thumb and my index finger and uh, hit a voice. Some jazz pianists transpose tunes to different keys based on where it's going to be easiest to help out with some voices. Okay, I think that's what I wanted to get through today, but let's do one more thing. Let's look at if you're improvising. So we already said that you can use the stride style comping when you're improvising. <laughs> Also, have the right hand shuttling back and forth in that third hand approach as you're improvising. Right, bass could be in four or two. choices as you're improvising, right, um, in order to accommodate some more comping. Some of you maybe who are like me who tend to play too many notes, this is going to be really good for you because it kind of helps space out your improvisation. You can also improvise using these shared hand voicings. Um, it's just going to take a lot of practice because it takes some getting used to. conscientious with my fingering and thinking about keeping these fingers, these three fingers uh, in particular, available so that when it comes time, and notice sometimes I'm not able to help out with my right hand, but if I can have the root and seven, the root and third, sorry, the root 7th and 3rd, or the root 3rd and 7th, um, then I can make a nice enough voicing to get kind of the core notes in there. So, just to review, first approach, stride style comping, the left hand alternates between the bass and the chords, but don't feel like you have to do it every quarter note like you would in stride, you can do it uh, more at a more leisurely pace. Second one is your third hand approach, your right hand is going to alternate between a melody and chords while your left hand plays a bass line. And then your third approach is those shared hand voicings. And um, I'll do a video about that eventually, but this book is really the best place to learn this. So I hope that that helps. Keep those suggestions coming of what you'd like to learn about. I hope that that was helpful. Um, and I will see you soon.